Hey, everybody. Uh, I just wanted to uh, share some things from the Friday folder. First of all, you are receiving this table, okay? This table uh, basically shows the different ways, uh, different shapes, uh, uh, basically have their rotational inertia calculated. So you see the axis of rotation, uh, the definition of radius, and then mass will be given to you. Um, these are not things you're going to have to memorize. This is a resource that you'll have at hand. Uh, they might refer to a solid cylinder, a thin hoop, a sphere, maybe a long uniform rod, uh, etc. Now there's two things I want to talk about uh, regarding this. So this is posted in that folder and if it is for you to reference, okay? Uh, from that video, I don't know if you can see my art, right? Uh, I worked really hard on that. You can thank Jeanette Parsons if you know her. She's an old Lee Summit, uh, old Lee Summit art teacher. I loved art. Uh, maybe not great. That's a sphere. <laughs> That's a thin hoop. Okay. Um, the question from the video, and it might have created some misconceptions because I saw that uh, on uh, the ranking tasks. Uh, Radius and mass, uh, there are two situations, okay? Uh, one, he had similar shapes, okay? He had two cylinders of different masses, same shape, and they went down at the same time, so it appeared that mass didn't matter, okay? Uh, and then he took a thin copper tube, like a uh, cylinder, and then that thick aluminum one, and sent him thinking, oh, the big one might make it faster, or whatever, they made the prediction, but they made it at the same time. Uh, and so I'm actually going to, on a different video, take that uh, concept and learn about on equal shapes, like similar shapes, only comparing uh, cylinders, only comparing spheres, only comparing thin hoops, okay? Uh, they will have the same rotational inertia because it's calculated mR squared. Now, the quantity is different, but as far as it going down a slope, Right, so again, MR squared, if I calculated, they'd have different masses, different radii, they'd have different I values. But when it's rolling downhill, I'm going to explain in a new video, it's about energy and conservation of energy, why they make it down the, uh, the hill at the same time or the same rate, okay? But this is what I want to talk about. I wanted you to compare different shapes, and I've put out the two extremes here and here. Uh, in my sixth period, uh, Jefferson uh, Donald uh, started thinking about them as little tiny bits of masses that can, uh, that make up. Now, if I had the same lump of clay, meaning the same amount of little tiny masses, and I created a thin hoop, each clump of clay, let me try to do this. Of course, I lost my black marker. Of course. Right? If it were just this axis rotation, and this is the tiny clump of clay, I'd have this radius and mass, and I'd go mR squared, okay? So what I want you to think about is each one of these little tiny masses have an mR squared. I have pushed all that mass out to a certain radius, meaning I've maximized the radius, and I have that same amount of mass. So you have to, when you're thinking about the ranking, you've got to think about them as the same amount of mass in the different shapes. So that's probably the hard part about that video um, as far as, I probably should have just explained the MR squared and had you rank them, and then we talk about uh, the energy and conservation. So on the sphere, so this has maximized the radius. If all those masses were now compacted in a sphere, right, one, the outer radius would be much smaller, right, and then two, you've got masses that are right along the axis or have zero radius, right? Right, so that eliminates some. And then they're just in that next layer. And you can think of it as little hoops, right? Little spheres, greater, 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 greater. Or you can think of it as little tiny thin, thin hoops, right? Like a toilet paper roll or something like that. I formed them in a sphere. But each one of those masses having a smaller radius Etc. So is that kind of making sense as far as the total rotational inertia? If I had the same mass, right? If I if I made it out of little small, little small chunks of clay, 
same amount of chunks of clay, which one had a greater one? Well, because this has maximized the radius and the same radius, this has to be the greatest. And then because this has compressed all the clay into a small ball, more of the mass is around this axis of rotation, okay? Now, uh, the long, I guess the rods uh, that are rotated around midway, right? That's just to drive it. There's no way you're going to know uh, how to compare those with these. But I was just trying to uh, see if we could get an intuition. You love how that board stays up? I know. It's going to totally fall down. Let's see if I can get that jammed in there. Please stay. Nope, not going to stay. Anyways, I so just wanted to give you some background, see if that could change some of your perceptions about comparing Assume that these have the same amount of mass, but then what, how their rotational inertia is going to uh, be modified or changed or relative uh, to one another. That was a bunch of jubbly mess. Anyways, uh, look for the one about.